Today we're going to look at a simple verse, and over the next three weeks we will look at the three parts of this verse. Today's verse comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. God, we come before you again and we, we read your word. And, well, sometimes there are passages, sometimes there are verses. We ask that this verse might speak to us and encourage us and give us direction as we look in our lives on how we can proceed this next week, this next month, this next year. We ask these things that we might be able to be edified, that your soul would speak to our soul as we commune with you through your word. Mm. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Faith, hope, and love. Now I'm going to take these out of order. Today we're going to look at hope. Next week we're going to look at faith. The week after that, we're going to look at love. And there's a variety of ways in which we can look at these things. Uh, and some of us see more in one thing than the other. Uh, we just finished up 1 Corinthians, not, in, not us specifically, but if you read in this chapter, it's often called the love chapter. And there's a lot of descriptions of love. And then he write, goes through all these descriptions of love, and then he caps it up and says, And these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Now this might be a way in which we can boil down our faith, hmm. boil down our, our beliefs. Do you have faith, you have hope, and do you have love? Some of us, Find it hard for one, two, or three <laughs> of these things. And there are people in your life, and there are circumstances that happen on a daily basis that cause us to struggle with one or more of these attributes. Now, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. As we look at some of the branches of hope, and we want to see how we can hold on to it. 1 Corinthians 3, going back a little bit, verse 14 says, If any man's work abide, which he has built upon thereon, he shall receive a reward. I bring this verse up because sometimes living is hard work. Sometimes staying alive is not just a Bee Gees song. <laughs> sometimes staying alive is a tax. It's a chore. Yeah. It's, oh, I just wish I could stay in bed and then maybe not get up. Some of us have things in life that beat us down. And to choose to live is a challenge at times. Putting one foot in front of the other. Uh, Erica's dad used to say, uh, if, uh, if I don't, he'll be there if the creek don't rise. God willing and the creek don't rise. Followed up with, and I wake up on this side of the ground. Imagine waking up on the other side of the ground. I don't know what you do. <laughs> First fact, you'd, you'd be able to breathe because you woke up, but I don't know for how much longer. It'd be an odd experience, I'll just put it that way. But some of us have to live life in a challenging mean. Because as we look at hope, as we look at faith, as we look at love, we're thinking these things cannot be. Now, I was reading some documents that talked about faith and hope and a lot of different things that brought some of these things up. And there was a man who made some arguments and he said that at first glance, the relationship between faith and hope might seem obvious. People that have faith have hope and people that have hope have faith. Seemingly, a person cannot have one 
without the other. So he goes on to say that many would argue that this situation is more complex than that. They have faith because they need hope. Others might claim that they have faith precisely because they have hope. And lastly, others might say people have hope because they need faith. Some people like to even sneak in a fourth argument that people have hope because they have faith. So sometimes you have it because of it, or sometimes you need it because of it, or sometimes you have it because you need it. There's all sorts of ways in which we can look at hope. Number one, they have faith because they need hope. And number three, people have hope because they need faith. Kind of sounds like a cop-out. Well, you have one because you need the other. It's not really a way in which we can base this on. Perhaps some of you are familiar with philosophy, and there's this guy who writes this thing called Pascal's Wager. And a way in which we could write this in a new form would be, I have hope because I need to hope for something. There are a few things in life that we have to do. We choose to do a lot of things. One of the things in life that you have to do is breathe. Because no matter if you try to stop yourself breathing, your body will say, no, 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 and it will knock you out, and it will start breathing again. Now, if you try to hold yourself underneath water and do the, what is it, the, the mafia concrete boots or something like that. I mean, these, these are other options. Someone else is trying to force the issue. But our body has ways of making us do things that we may not choose to do. There comes a point where you can only hold so much waste inside you. And no matter how hard you try, a little bit might come out. <laughs> Try laughing. Doesn't always work. But sometimes, as, as we look at this, this breakdown, there's this self-serving justification for faith, even if it is religious or secular. But number three, people have hope because they need faith. It's just as bad. And it's just an inverted formula. And I, and I bring all of these pieces up because sometimes we have this thing that I have faith because I need hope or I have hope because I need faith. And, and it's not about that. We can look back to St. Uh, Anselm of Canterbury and he captures the best essence of faith. And he says, I do not seek to understand so that I may believe but I believe so that I may understand. And what is more, I believe. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9. That unless I do believe, I shall not understand. Some of us struggle with the desire to learn more. How do I say that? Some of you have a smartphone. And you use this much of its potential. Because that's all you need it for. But frankly, that's all they sell. Most of us do not want to learn new technologies when we have been doing something the same for so long. And then something comes up and we have no idea how to do it. Now some of you are pros at something that is a lost art. And that is programming the VCR. Some of you have no idea what that is, VCR. Some of you realize, okay, there was a time where the only way to program it was you just hit the record button when your show was on. But then they gave you this option that you could feed the box through your VCR and you could record a channel at a time you're not home or while you watch another channel. And that was just a game changer. And then TiVo came out and you could record multiple channels at the same time and watch them later. And now you don't have to be home at 6 o'clock on a Wednesday because you can record it and watch it on a Thursday. Now you have to be careful because some people may spoil things. 
And now we have a thing in our society. Spoiler alert! This isn't a racing terminology where you're letting people know there's something on the back of a, of a trunk of a car. No, no, it means I'm about to say something that's going to ruin this if you don't know what we're talking about. But this idea that we try to seek understanding. I do not seek understanding so that I may believe, but I believe that I might understand. And what is more, I believe that unless I do believe, I will not understand it. And it can become a head scratcher. And where I, you're just talking in circles, Pastor Matthew. You lost me five minutes ago. The idea here is that on the grounds of faith, in relation to belief, faith is an expression of our current state of affairs. It represents a belief that actually exists. But hope is different. It is directed towards the future. You can have faith now. But if you want hope, it's got to be of the belief that something's coming later. I remember when I was in seminary, there was a man giving a, a sermon and he passed out a fork to everyone. So everybody got a fork. And he gave the story of a lady who loved church potlucks. And she, I mean, this was a southern, Midwest, that era potluck where everything is a casserole. Everything is a jello salad with a jello mold. And it's good. There is a lost art to casseroles. Most of us just know either green bean casserole or tuna casserole. And then we kind of count a lasagna, and that's kind of somewhere in the middle. But there's a lot of things that can be done with the casserole, where you just kind of throw things together, and it comes out great. Some of us do not do well in that, and we put things together, and they do not come out great. But she gave these forks out. Or he gave these forks out, because the lady in this casserole, she'd go and she'd serve, she'd serve, she'd serve. And as she would cleaning up, she would tell people, keep your fork, because the best is yet to come. So she's cleaning up their plates, she's cleaning up their knives, she's cleaning up their spoons, but she left them their fork. You know why? What comes after dinner? Uh, I just gave it away. What comes after dinner? Dessert. Ice cream, dessert. Okay, <laughs> we need a spoon for that. In the Midwest and the South, they didn't have a lot of ice creams with their casserole. Sometimes they did pie a la mode. But there were a lot of pies. There were a lot of cakes. There were a lot of desserts that a fork is needed. And most people would say the best is yet to come. And so forks were distributed to this group of people who were listening to this because we want to remember that the best was yet to come. And some of us have hope because what's coming is better than what is now. And we cannot have hope if we don't believe that there's a tomorrow. As much as you want to fight it, and we don't know how it happens, but somehow or another, the sun will come out tomorrow. You can bet your bottom dollar oh, no. <laughs> that there will be sun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you can't try to hold it back. I mean, there was a, a story of a king who was told that you have all the power in the world. Oh, yes. No, you don't. Go out to the beach and try to tell the ocean that you cannot come in. So the king would go out and try to tell the beach, waves do not approach. Stay back. Didn't really work, did it? Waves came up, got on his throne. It was not a good thing. He just didn't understand it. But the people who believe that tomorrow will come, regardless of their faith status, have hope. It will come. One of the things that children in the foster care um, system have as part of their identity is that the sun will come up tomorrow. Because many of them go from family to family, from bad situation to worse, from here to there, and the only constant in their life is the sun will come up tomorrow. And so many people in the system have a bad day when it's cloudy. Because they don't see the sun and that reminder of what is constant. Something that they have a little bit 
of a, a perceived control about is not there. Hope can be translated as confidence or trust. It is an expression of what is sometimes called directly intentional. Hope might be best to under, understood as a confident expectation in the achievement of a desired state of affairs. It was an example of the anticipated fulfillment of intention. Now, some of these words resonate with you. Other ones, like, I'm not in college anymore. I don't need to learn big words. Just stay with the and and. Okay, I understand. But if we look at this reflection of a desired intention, if you live your life with hope, then you trust something's coming. But now, I took this out of order because technically hope, when built on faith, has a great potential. In fact, when we, we look at the definition of hope in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, or excuse me, chapter 11, we see that hope is a special definition that is not found, or is, is made clearer to us. It says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. Now again, I'm bringing up faith, but confidence in what we hope for. Faith starts with what's believing what's coming up. I'm a fan of having hope before having faith. And I say this because we have people in our communities today who do not have faith, but they do have hope. And we can teach people about faith through our demonstration of hope. Now, love is a key piece on this, and that's why the Apostle Paul said, but the greatest of these is love. And we're going to come back to that in a couple weeks. But I want you to really look at hope. What is it that you hope in? Where does your hope lie? As Christians... My hope is nothing less than what we sang it earlier. My hope is built on nothing less than what? Jesus, blood, and righteousness. Jesus, love, and righteousness. This is my hope. If we sing about hope, if we believe about hope, if we talk about hope, I mean, I think there was a movie, what, Hope Floats or something like that? We have a lot of things that we can connect hope to. There are people named hope. In fact, there's a church just up the road called Hope Chapel. Hope is a thing in which people can understand. They can get behind it. But some of them don't understand it. I say we can understand it, but we don't understand it. It's one of those complex terms. Can you describe to me what hope is? Well, it means to be hopeful. That doesn't help. Teenagers love circular definitions. It just kind of revolves around itself. But if we look at this idea of faith and understanding what Jesus has done for us, I see it as rooted in hope. Because we have already got this idea of what's coming tomorrow, but some of us have placed our hope in things that will not happen. Yet we believe it! And the secular world views Christianity as placing our hope in something that is wrong. False hope, as it's called, in that the gospel is not true, and that those of you who believe there's an afterlife, oh, poppycock, balderdash, not to be trusted, not to be believed. We can't see it, so we shouldn't believe it. Again, none of us can prove that the sun is coming up, but we've seen it. We don't know all the science behind it. We understand this thing about orbiting, but we can't do anything about it. And as we look at these concepts of hope, and we now have to make the question of, well, is it real or is it not? And that's where you as a Christian need to start figuring out how you can live hope out 
in a world of despair, in a world of doubt, in a world of hostility. Because today, for us to say, I have hope, sometimes we are looked upon with suspicion because your hope is misplaced or misguided. Oxygen is necessary for fire. If you have fire, you know that oxygen is present. Oxygen is not sufficient for fire. Fire is necessary for hope. But faith is not sufficient for hope because you can have faith about a number of things and yet no real hope. One can have faith in the afterlife and have no hope that one will meet with a desirable state of affairs when arriving there. So faith without hope is possible. And we talked earlier a few weeks ago with James and we said that faith without works is dead. Show me your faith, I will show you my works. Show me your works, it will demonstrate my faith. Faith is necessary for hope. But faith is not sufficient for hope. And so, as you look at hope, and you see the vast definitions that people will talk circles around, and which in some cases I did as well. There was a, a Pope, Pope Benedict, excuse me about that, Pope Benedict, He said, the position of faith is for the sake of hope. We have faith. We have hope. We're not sure what they exactly mean, but we start with the basis of, I know what's coming next, and I'm going to believe it with all my heart. And because I believe it with all my heart, I'm going to look back, and I'm going to have this confirm my faith. And I'm going to have it solidify what I believe. Starting with hope, we'll be able to build next week on faith. But as you look out into a world that seems hopeless, I want you to see if you can nudge someone who feels, what's the point? Why bother? They perhaps have an Eeyore complex. Mm -hmm. If you say so, but I don't see the point. Mm. There are people like that in your life. You know this. Maybe you are that person as well. But with hope, and as we build this notion of hope, we see this push of how we can get it over the fence. Then that's where it starts. People will know us by our love. Great, and we'll look at that. But they first need to see our hope. Because if we have no hope, it will be impossible for us to demonstrate love. It will be impossible for us to share our faith. And if you're not sure if you have that hope to give to others, then that's where I ask that you take the time and you say, Lord, Help me with hope. Because I'm feeling beat down and I don't see a reason to continue to live. And there's something, something, something and we're not really sure. And that's when God calls us and we're at our most vulnerable. And those are the times when, God, I don't know, I don't understand, but I'm going to trust in you. And this is where we can really, as a community of faith, as a people who believe, Help those who have lost hope. Find those who are hopeless and point them in the direction of the cross. And this is where we need to take our faith and take our love. Heavenly Father, we come before you at this moment. We see that our position of faith for the sake of hope, none of this is meant to push us in a manner in which we cannot come back from.
Lord, continue to affirm our hope. And I ask God that you would do two things this week. Put us in touch with someone whose hope is on the brink of being extinguished. Put us in touch with someone with whom our love, our faith, our hope can help give someone else that hope that they so desperately need. But Lord, I also ask that you would put us in touch with someone this week that has more hope than we do, that can lift us up, can encourage us, can help us to be more hopeful. For Lord, we want to see your faith. We want to see your love. We want to see these things in action. May we see you and know you. Put us in touch with people who are better and who are less at expressing their abilities of hope. And may we be able to continue to place our hope in you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.